I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Pearl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. As I've mentioned last week, we're interviewing Sean McCraney and happy to have him here. I lifted up a couple of books last time. If my kingdom were of this earth, of, of this world, then my servants would fight. This is such an excellent read. And a book that Sean actually covered a bunch of topics in 2010 yeah. and published this in 2011, covering all the different aspects of where Mormonism meets biblical Christianity A to Z. And it's also a very excellent resource. Then the one that got it all started was I was a born-again Mormon. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But one of the things that uh, you quote in your book uh, on page 67, <coughs> Born Again Mormon, it says, Interestingly enough, by turning away from the search for absolute truth, God, my spiritual war had ended. Mm. I felt the relief, even happiness, that comes when an army has surrendered. At age 30, I completely resigned myself to the idea that God was an absentee manager and that humanistic philosophies were the only viable alternatives left. Wow, very, glad I wrote that. Yeah, very good. <laughs> but you did go through 17 years of living, well, I guess what you'd say now, a hypocritical kind of situation. On the outside, you were LDS, white shirt and tie, high council, Bishop Brick, yeah. uh, all that stuff. And I guess that pleased Mary. And the th you had three children, three girls, mm -hmm. and so and family that was pleasing to them. Mm -hmm. Yet inside, you were still struggling and searching yeah. for this relationship with God. I guess is yeah. that right? Yeah. And <clears throat> what's interesting, uh, Earl, is that. It got to the point that uh, when, uh, because I'm such a man of the flesh, that I needed to feel some kind of, some kind of um, retribution, sort of like self-flagellation. Oh, yeah. So I, I would start beating this boxing, canvas boxing bag with my fists just to get rid of the, 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 the tension from the hypocrisy. And I go to high council on Sunday mornings and I'd be in my suit and, and everything, and my hands would be covered in bloody scabs. From boxing. Just from things. hitting things, from the frustration of playing the game, but knowing inside that I didn't believe yeah, it really anymore. Wrong. I have to say, my period of time lasted probably about two years. <laughs> so 17 must have been tragic. And then to go to fast and testimony meetings and listen to testimonies, yeah. knowing that these people that are saying stuff don't really know what they're saying. Yeah. And then again, putting on the facade of, of right. doing that. But I didn't know what, I didn't know what, what was uh, missing in their testimony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now we come to probably <clears throat> the big event of your life, or at least a very turning point, 1997. You're yeah. going to pick up the girls, or at least one of them, and yeah. what happens? Well, uh, my wife asked me to go there at gymnastics practice, pick them up in Costa Mesa. You take a bridge in Huntington Beach to get there. And as I drove, I was really at the bottom of the barrel. Wow. Yeah, it was suicide. I had, been, I had tapped into hydrocodone and numbing myself recreationally. I had taken you know, vodka because it didn't smell, and I would just... <laughs> douse myself in it. I'll have know, to remember that. Friday <laughs> night. Yeah, remember that for Carla. <laughs> I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so uh, 
and, and I just was in such turmoil. And so I'm driving and really, I say I could have driven off the bridge as well as gone on to pick him up. And I turned the radio on and there's a radio pastor. Didn't know who he was. And he, and he asked this question. He said, if you could get yourself right with God, why haven't you done it? And it was like out of the blue. Had you ever turned on that station before or what? I would never listen to Christian radio, no. so I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, I would, may have been scanning. I don't even remember how I got him, to tell you the truth. God was there. God said, okay, yeah. it's, time. it's time. I know what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, I don't know why I haven't gotten myself right with God because I've tried. Now, to be honest, at this point in my life, I was not right with God. Yeah. I deserved... Uh, excommunication from the Mormon church by this time because yeah. I gave up the, all the Mormonism a long time ago. And he answered, he said, the reason you haven't gotten yourself right is because you can't. Boy, yeah. was that a revelation? Revelation like now, no other. Now you'd done all this study, yeah. read a lot of books. Yeah. Um, and, and was this just totally a new concept? Revelatory. New concept. Yeah, revelatory because to me, I could... In Mormonism, I could. I'd go to the temple and pay my tithing. Yeah. And so to me, Jesus was a God who would pick up the pieces if a mistake was made, but I could get myself right with God from the Mormon perspective. Right. But internally, I knew. It, and so when he said, the reason that you haven't is because you can't, I thought, I'm listening. What does that mean? You know? Is this when you pull over? I pull over. And he says, you can't. And this is why God sent his son. He sent his son because you can't fix yourself. You cannot do it. You don't repent to get yourself in a place where God will then love you. He loves you as you are. He loves you in the sinful state that you are. And he loved you so much he sent his son. I'm like, what a message. I can't believe this message. Who is this Jesus? <laughs> I don't know this Jesus. I know a different one. And he went on and he said, listen. Offer your life to God. He said, cry out to him and, and give him, and, and he said, give him your heart. And I was ready. And so I, 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 I prayed right then and there. And I said, Heavenly Father, because I'm LDS. Yeah, sure. I believed he was once a man, Heavenly Father. Yeah. I'm asking you in Jesus' name, who I thought was my elder brother, uh, change my life. Change my life. And I opened my eyes and nothing happened. You expected a little miracle. Or ah! <laughs> I always do it that way. Yeah. I say, like, oh, Sean has received us. <laughs> but no, I got nothing. And But the guy on the radio said, and tell him you'll wait. I don't know why he added that. Oh, just, oh, okay. And so I said, when I didn't get anything, I said, I'll wait. Wow. I'll wait. I drove to the practice. The girls were in practice and I was early. And I sat back and I closed my eyes and my mind went to three stories. I'll tell them really quickly. Yeah, I love these stories. The first one, I was in the shower. I was a kid, maybe eight or nine years old. Uh, we lived in Whittier, California, and uh, the phone rang. I grabbed a towel, got out, answered it. On the other end was a guy. He was disabled. He had a speech impediment. He said it was his mission to call people randomly and talk to them about Jesus. I remember that. He asked if he could pray with me. I said, sure. He prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed <laughs> so dang long. I have no idea to this day what he, what he said. And I heard my mom come in with groceries. I hung up the phone. My hair was dry. He prayed that long. I went in, got dressed, never thought of it again till that moment while I'm sitting there. But this little, somebody on a phone call was making his little mission, his what mission. he could do for the Lord. What he could do for the Lord. And he planted a seed in me. They, that back then bloomed that was in growing. 1997 yeah. yeah yeah and you didn't had never remembered no that idea again. no idea and I thought about that as I was sitting there yeah. next yeah. one I'm off my Mormon mission my wife and I moved to Logan Utah and uh, I got a job cleaning the pool at the health club up there yeah and I'm cleaning the pool and there's some dude and he's got a red hair mullet <laughs> and he's sitting poolside and he's reading a black book and as I get close to him I said, what are you reading? He said, the Bible. I said, are you LDS? Being a Mormon missionary, you know? Sure. He said, I used to be. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what happened, evil one? Yeah. <laughs> what did you do wrong? Yeah, what did you do wrong? <laughs> so we got into a big thing. And he, we wrapped up the conversation with him leaving the deck and saying, someday you'll know him. 
Someday you will know him. And I remembered those words as I was sitting there. The inter two th interesting things about that story. One, uh, several months later, my wife and I were going through Logan and we stopped at McDonald's and behind the counter was Mullet the Boy. Kid. Yeah. And he wasn't a kid. He was probably in his late 20s. Oh. And I said to my wife, look what happens when you turn from the Mormon oh. church. You become a counter boy at McDonald's. <laughs> I was that arrogant. So judging. So yeah. judgmental. Yeah. Look what he's done. Oh my goodness. The second uh, interesting thing is I was going through the Salt Lake City Airport about four years ago and standing there in a TSA uniform, he has not improved in his job standing. Sitting there was this guy. Oh. And I went up to him and I said, did you ever live in Yoga Logan, Utah? And he said, yeah, I did. And I said, do you, I want you to know that you changed my life. I said, are you a Christian? He said, yes, I am. Oh my goodness. And he did not remember. He doesn't remember he that remember. pool site, but you did. But I did, yeah. yeah. Third story, I was teaching seminary. I was working in a bank as an investment officer, and a lady, a girl was leaving to go get married, and she and her husband, Christians, wrote me a letter about how important Jesus was to them. I took the letter, I read it. They knew I was Mormon, and I mocked it to the LDS seminary class. We you read, read it. it to them yeah. and mocked it. And, and, they, yeah. and, so, and that came back to my mind. The letter she wrote, the mullet guy, you'll know him, and then the guy who called me on the phone. And I opened my eyes, and my girls came out of the gym, and uh, I, of course, I didn't see him with my eyes, but I knew God. My heart was changed so radically um, that uh, I knew there was a God, and I knew that he had forgiven me of everything I had ever done or would do, and that Jesus did that for me. And I knew that I was in complete harmony with him and his will at that point in my life, that I was not needing to do anything, and that I had gotten my life right now by accepting, accepting his son. Him. Believing in him. Believing in his son, yeah. Oh, and I drove home, and the kids were being rowdy and stuff, and I thought, but I'm Mormon. And for the first time in my life, it did not matter to me that, there was, that I was LDS or whatever. I... The first time in my life, I was just secure in being with him. What did you think about your LDS? Did you think, okay, I've got to reconcile this Jesus no. with LDS? No. No, I just thought, okay, I'm a Mormon. I'm a born-again Mormon. I, I just accepted my faith. I did not think I had to change Mormonism. I didn't think I had to go to the Christian church. I just thought, okay, I'm just going to... And so I thought, well, let me tell my wife what happened. Did you tell her? Oh, yeah. What would she say? She's, well, that's really interesting, <laughs> you know? Uh, but it sounds like another one of you are communist, you know, Kierkegaard things. Another, so. another fantasy or another, another fantasy. whim or something. Yeah. So I started sharing it in the ward. And remember, I'm still in my positions. Yeah. And I'm still, I started saying, have you... Do you know, understand what rebirth is? Being born again? And people say, well, the mighty change, the Book of Mormon does talk about the, the mighty, mighty change. change. I say, yeah, I've had the mighty change. Really? Yeah. And no one wants to talk about it. Well, and so you ask a bishop, what does it mean to be born again? Well, we take the sacrament every week and we renew our covenants at baptism. No, 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 no. Do you know that God loves you? And they, well, you know, Brother McCraney, you know, and, and I realized they didn't know him. They didn't understand. Him. Did not understand him. <laughs> yeah. So you go through another four-year period of uh, yeah. still, I mean, again, the miracle of, of everything happened at 1997, but yeah. you still are somewhat Sean McCraney. Still, still <laughs> Sean McCraney going to the LDS church. Still, um, I knew that I had a relationship with God, but the interesting thing, Earl, we moved to Park City at this time. Yeah. And uh, I did not read the word. I didn't know I was supposed to. I'm really dumb, really. I didn't no, know I was supposed to. No, I mean, he, you were still, were you following Christianity at all? No. I mean, this pastor that, uh, I guess we can mention his name. Who, oh, who you that was Charles Stanley. Charles Stanley. Yeah. I didn't really contact him again till later. Or ever hear him again. Hear him you again, no. Listening to him. And no. Getting didn't. the idea that you needed to read the Bible or anything no. like that. Um, but I did order his tape oh, of that you? show. Oh, did you? And I got it and I played it for my wife. Oh. And she thought it was nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. I played it for my eldest brother. He said it's the most evil thing he's ever heard in his life. Oh, no. Is that <laughs> yeah. strange? That was, yeah, that was the, his response. I thought, how do you say it's the evil, most evil thing? That's, this has changed my life. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, um, so I didn't, 
I didn't tap into anything except the Lord put three Christian people into my life at that time. They never said, you got to go to church. They never said, you got to leave Mormonism. They were, all three were devout. Is this in Park City? Uh, th this was in Huntington Beach before we moved to Park City, okay. but I maintained my relationship with them. Okay. Phil Howard, uh, Vanessa Mangione, who's now Vanessa Darnell, and... Um, and Cynthia Loy and her husband Dennis. And they had a profound effect in helping me understand, you know, you're gonna have to start now getting into things, the word and... This uh, happened at a gym or something, weren't that's it? That's right. It wasn't at a gym, you were yeah. working out or something mm -hmm. and, you, and she... she Vanessa uh, was there and Cynthia was there and I said to Cynthia, who had a Jesus sticker on her bumper of her van, what does that mean to you? And she looked at me kind of angrily and she because she thought I was maybe hitting on her and she said, it means everything to me. And when she said that, I thought, Oh, this person knows, knows something, something that, yeah. that, I've, that ties into what yeah, I experienced yeah, too. So she started talking to me about trusting in the Lord, yeah. never said leave Mormonism. Vanessa started talking to me about you need to start kind of getting rid of your liberal views about this politically and that, and, and showed me why, you know. And, yeah. and then Phil, who's now, now deceased, he uh, would talk to me about the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it moved to Park City, and but I never tapped into a church. I never tapped into the Word. And I became as much probably more of a sinner. And this really disturbs people. They say, you see, he, he yeah. didn't love the Lord. Yeah. He, changed heart, but changed I'm heart. still yeah. but I'm I, still in the flesh because you didn't have direction. No, none. Yeah. 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 Well, so how did you get the direction? Uh, asked to be excommunicated. Okay. And uh, was... And, uh, in fact, the, the, the Mary went with me to that court, sat by my side, and it was very interesting. And um, it was very accusatory. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but, uh, and then after that, I was not attending the church, and I heard on the radio that Calvary Chapel of Costa Mesa was offering a school of ministry. Oh, my goodness. And I thought, that's interesting. Why not? Yeah. And so, and then I had known then that, that Vanessa and Cynthia and Phil all went to Calvary Chapel. Oh, okay. And so I thought, oh, and so I applied and I, and I, and, and you I, got accepted. I got accepted. Yeah. So until then you really hadn't even still read the word. No. I'll be darned. No. Except on the Mormon mission and I understood oh, sure. it from the, yeah. Yeah. Underline Mormon scriptures and stuff. Of not, course. Not, not Christian scriptures. So how does Born Again Mormon come about? This is during your time at Calvary Chapel? Yeah, while I was going to school, I started writing Born Again Mormon okay. in the part-time job I had. Wow. Yeah. And what inspired that? You just knew that you, I mean, you obviously have a heart. In fact, I wrote this, it, it, uh, or wrote this, this is from your book. It says, occasionally I've taken the opportunity to share my rebirth with other Latter-day Saints. It didn't take long before I could see that I was sharing a message totally foreign to their way of thinking, is what you said earlier. Yeah. I've had the opportunity to discuss the wonder of my spiritual rebirth with a number of people from a variety of diverse Christian denominations, and every one of them res resonated entirely with my description of the change I had experienced and how miraculously new my life has since been. This caused me to wonder why so many Latter-day Saints rejected or misunderstood my claims of rebirth by calling it man-made or self-serving and even evil, yeah. especially when all the manifestations of my experience were uplifting, wholesome, and positive. Yeah. So you felt like you needed to share. Yeah, I did. And, and when I realized that verbal sharing with the LDS was not getting me anywhere, I thought I'd write the book. Had you yeah. always wanted to write a book? Or? No, yeah? no. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really quite terrible. And I've been picked on for, uh, I write like I talk. Yeah. So, I, you know. I, <laughs> I, in fact, I love that about this book. You know, yeah. it's, it's just, it, you can read Sean McCraney in, yeah. in, in every word there. Yeah, I wish I was more eloquent, but. No, you're fine. Maybe yeah. had I studied harder. <laughs> you and I studied harder. We'd be better. We could have been a little more something or other. But anyway, so you felt compelled to write the book and you even started getting criticism from Christians. Yeah. Because you didn't, they didn't think what? Yeah. Well, I, I was said, it, it, the first edition was Born Again Mormon. And uh, they said, there's no such thing. And they said, don't title this Born Again Mormon. Somebody who was in publishing Christian You can't Christian be Mormon publishing. and right. Born Again. It's impossible, they said. I said, that's not impossible. I'm, I'm, I'm right here. 
well, you know, you got to get out of there. Yeah. And I really believe that at that point, uh, Earl, I, I, most uh, Christian apologists and evangelicals outreach to Latter-day Saints was let's extract them with information that is just so shocking and then let's work on getting them into the church. The anti-Mormon yeah, the, stuff The anti, first. really strong anti-Mormon. Yeah. And I just believe, listen, let's start with getting them born again. And then you can supplement their rebirth with anti-Mormon, what they call anti-Mormon material, et yeah. cetera. Yeah. But I really believe still, and that's what we called our ministry, Born Again Mormon, was let's bring in rebirth to these Latter-day Saints, have them experience that, and then God can start working on them as to what to do. I think that's part of the problem to, that we experience today, not to jump too far ahead, with sure. so many atheists coming out and becoming atheists, is that oh, they're I not totally, experiencing Christ first. I totally agree. When I was watching you uh, during the TV20, and we're going to get into that really quickly because we're run, running out of time again, but um, the fairness that you offered, mm -hmm. and, and you always began with prayer, mm -hmm. so I kept thinking, well, you know, he's involving God in this thing, I, one, one way or the other. And as I listened, then I kept thinking, you know, he's, he's asking me not to trust him, mm. but to go read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, that can't be bad. Mm. And, you know, trust Jesus. Yeah. Well, that can't be bad. I believe in Jesus. And mm. so I feel, I feel like that was the message that you were trying, I've always tried to portray. Praise God. Uh, yeah, of trying to help people understand and, and where they're at, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. Not just, not just leave Mormonism and then you're right because so many go agnostic or oh. atheist and it, it, yeah. So sad. It is. Yeah. Well, they don't have anywhere to turn and you could have been there too. I would have been, What probably. do you think kept you from just, okay, well, I mean, the humanist, you were believing in that. Kind I was of. a humanist. I was a nihilist that believed in nothing, but I, but I adhered to the social programs of the Mormon church. So yeah. that, to me, to throw that out with my kids enjoying, you know, their friends and everything, that was not smart. Why get rid of something that's serving our family just yeah. because I find out that the doctrines are so false? But it's almost a miracle that you would make that without a lot of support and help. Yeah. Maybe these friends at the gym and so on must yeah. have really helped that. Well, the rebirth was the thing that got, was everything. That's everything. That came, then the friends, and that's, that's the key. If people are reborn, I don't think any man, woman needs to worry at all about anybody who's been reborn. Yeah, once your eyes are open and you start seeing that dependence that you have on this Jesus, Amen. who did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves, yes. then everything else is just where you're at. And I tell people, and I've heard you say this too, to be patient with spouses and others that Absolutely. don't quite see it because we were there too. Sure. We were, we were judgmental and thought this was evil or you didn't you discounted it and everything yeah. were you aware of of other people again the tanners or the mark hoffman thing were you aware of any of that as it happened stories or, but not anything yeah, in depth yeah no. now grant palmer wrote his book about 2002 were mm. you aware of his book i i did read that as i was preparing to write born again mormon and called grant and he met with me oh. uh, in oceanside california and we sat and talked while i was in this transition stuff was very that helpful it was helpful. I, I really appreciated the, the honesty of his book. Yeah. And it affected me greatly. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was very helpful. Interesting. Yeah, and he endorsed Born Again Mormon later. I, I think he did it begrudgingly because oh, it's so it? poorly it on... written. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but... So poor, no, it's not poor. Well, I mean, it's, I, you know. It's Sean talking. It's Sean talking, <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, there's so much. Um, did you, did you get a decent response from Born Again Mormon? How did you no. distribute it? What we did was we built a website and uh, and we we there was no YouTube at this time. No, there was no any you way had to promote no TV, it. nothing, or radio or anything. So we built a website and we I think we had maybe ten hits <laughs> for the first like five months. And anytime somebody would write, because I would just run out and sell. Mary, look at somebody's yeah. written something. And, and, and let me step back for a second. Sure. Writing Born Again Mormon was really tough for Mary because uh, I sp I'm pretty honest in it. I don't go into all yes, my sins, yeah, it's but I talk good. about being sinful. And that was embarrassing to her. But she allowed me to advance on credit cards and to print the book and to put it in our garage and to build the website and to be sitting on 2,000 books and hope 
that somehow we would get it out there. At least cover the cost of printing or something. Something. Because you did all that yourself. Yeah, we did it all ourselves. But she allowed it, still being in the church, our daughter's still in the church, and as a leap of faith, she allowed me to go to the school of ministry to quit my job, to work as a, as a parking attendant guy, to write Born Again Mormon, all just not really knowing. So I have to take my hat off to her uh, yeah. as a, as a Latter-day Saint woman standing by her husband. It was pretty remarkable. Wouldn't have happened without her. God really picked a good one there for you, yeah. didn't, didn't yeah. he? Um, and you went through, I mean, I know you've been criticized, at least you've got phone calls about, oh, you're just in this for the money. And, <laughs> and you'd say, you don't even want to go there. No, no. Because money is, money's always been an ebb and flow yeah. in, throughout your ministry. Yeah. It's never been about money. No. I always thought people on TV made money. Yeah, yeah. So somebody writes me and says, no, now you're on Sean's show and you're also doing a little Doris Hanson and you yeah. have your own show. You must be making lots of money. Oh, yeah. Like, no, no, we actually pay for the privilege and, and you've paid your way along all the way. Yeah, it's you know? not a... It's, Never been about money. I'm not sure really work of, for the Lord is ever really in the money. Yeah. Yeah. When it starts, when money starts to really get too big, I start, I wonder if maybe They're almost there's some sellout somewhere on yeah. what should be done. I wonder. Because there does seem to be a natural, and Jesus warned us of this, of the persecution and, the, yeah. and that there's going to be challenges. Yeah. Born Again Mormon was not uh, well received by the Christians uh, and uh, nor by the LDS. Nor by the Mormons. Yeah. Yeah. So would you write it again? Absolutely. I mean, you needed to write it, right? Just I had to, to write it. Down. it. Yeah. And we did ultimately, has we have gone through tens of thousands. Yeah, you had a second printing. Yeah. 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 So it has gotten out there. But that was only when somebody here in Utah wrote and said, I heard of your book and I think that it's needed. I want a copy. We sent a copy to her. And then a year later, she said, my husband has a television station that you need to talk. Uh, let's see if we can work something out. Okay. Yeah, we're going to jump into TV20. Our half hour is gone again already. It's amazing. Anyway, Sean, uh, let me just see here. Um, you know, one thing about this book is that it isn't anti-Mormon. I don't just, think so. No, it isn't. It's a very honest uh, portrayal of, of you and, and your story. And, mm -hmm. and I think anybody would, would benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Anyway, we appreciate you watching, and uh, I know this is fascinating. Sean has, has influenced so many people, and you can find him on YouTube. You've got websites, Born Again Mormon still. HOTM.TV is uh, the primary one. You can also watch his Sunday sermons on HOTM.TV and campuschurch.com. Campus dot TV. Dot TV. Okay.